grew up. I was a freckle-faced, red-headed, fat kid, and everybody was mean, and I'm not sure bullied really captures it. I would go over to sleep over at my friend's house, and one night I woke up, and I was somehow handcuffed to a futon and got, like, beat with table hockey stick. The verbal wounds were what cut even deeper to where people would walk up and just say, you know, Brennan, nobody loves you. Look at you, like, you're so fat, you're just, you're gonna die. Look at you, like, nobody loves you. Die. As a kid, I didn't know how to process that. The words and the emotional stuff, it really, it leaves scars. And if everything this world has to offer can't make the pain stop, and it's miserable going through life, then why would I want to go through life? One evening after some heavy drinking, I hunched over in the bottom of my shower in my dorm room. I had a razor and I had it pressed to my wrist. I intend this to be the last. And I just remember I, I, I couldn't do it. The next morning, God really just like played a highlight reel of my life. Here's all the times where hurt came in and here's all the times where you went to other things beside me. And every step I was there reaching out to you and you knew it. And God began to just walk me through other things I had to let go and say, and that was hard. Um, it was convicting, not only to know that the answer to all my pain had always been there, but that I had effectively told him to pound sand and go, go away, I don't want any part of you. I grew up with this idea in my head of the person I ought to be and the person I knew I could be. And I remember just wondering, how, how did I get this far apart? And how, how do I bring those two back together? And I just remember God just telling me to come home. All I knew is the next step is all God to give me. It's time to go back home. It's time to get plugged in at church and start living out your faith. I came back home from Colorado, moved back in with my parents. And there was a time where I was working a job that I felt like was going nowhere, didn't know what the future had in store. And then I got a phone call from the head coach at Arizona Christian University asking if I wanted to play football. And it was like God giving me back everything that I had had to lay down before. God showed me that I was supposed to be an influencer and while at ACU, they taught me how to do that. And now every day I go to law school and I'm able to have that influence, whether it's speaking up in the classroom where I'm in the minority opinion here or the work I get to do through internships around them in the country, God is using me to have influence on the culture. While I was at ACU, God burdened my heart for people. And I realized that the gifts I've been given, the positions I've been placed in, the influence God has given me. It's not just for myself, but it's to influence the world for Him. In most of my life, I just wanted to be left alone. I wanted people to either stop saying something mean or just ignore me. And God was saying, no, I've, I've called you to leave. ACU fueled the flame in my life and provided a vision and a calling for where I was gonna go. And then once I had that vision, ACU fueled the flame for me to go out and be able to influence the culture with truth.